Dear viewers, greetings. This present video is about flash column chromatography. In this video, we are going to discuss the following contents. First, introduction about flash column chromatography, followed by components of flash column chromatography, principle of flash column chromatography, steps in flash column chromatography, applications of flash column chromatography, advantages of flash column chromatography, and finally, limitations of flash column chromatography. Flash column chromatography. Flash column chromatography is a method of chemical separation that is used to purify chemical mixtures. Flash column chromatography is also known as flash purification due to its function as a purification method. Flash column chromatography is also sometimes referred to as medium pressure chromatography. This term flash chromatography or flash column chromatography was first coined in 1970s by W. Clark Still and co-workers at Columbia University to describe the separation process using a gas pressurized solvent reservoir. There are two components of flash column chromatography. They are absorbance and solvent system. The first component of the flash chromatography is adsorbance. It includes silica, fluorescent, alumina and reverse phase silica. The first one is silica. Silica is slightly acidic medium. It is best for ordinary compounds and a good separation is achieved. The second one is fluorescent. Fluorescent is the mild neutral medium. 200 mesh can be effective for easy separation. Less than 200 mesh is best for purification by filtration. As some compounds stick on fluorescent and test first. The third one is alumina. Alumina is basic or neutral medium. Alumina can be effective for the easy separation and purification of amines. And the fourth and final one is reverse phase silica. The most polar compounds elute fastest, the most non-polar slowest. The second component of the flash column chromatography is solvent system. Flash column chromatography is generally done with a mixture of two solvents, one of which is polar and the other is non-polar. The only one component solvent solution that works are from least polar to most polar. It includes pentane, petroleum ether and hexanes, which are coming under the hydrocarbons, ether and dihydrochloromethane which polarity of is very close and finally ethanoic acid. Principle of flash column chromatography. The principle of flash column chromatography is basically similar to that of column chromatography. The underlying principle involves the use of liquid eluent which is propelled via a brief glass column by means of gas pressure, often nitrogen or compressed air. The glass column is filled with an absorbent material that has a specific particle size and a relatively large inner diameter. The silica gel with a particle size range from 40 to 63 micrometer is commonly employed as the predominant stationary phase. The mobile phase used for the flash column chromatography is a mixture of two solvents, one of which is polar and others are non-polar. Sometimes you can use just one fluid. The chemical in the mixer are separated based on their affinity for the mobile phase and stationary phase, which causes them to migrate through the column at various rates and comes out from the bottom at different time. Steps in flash column chromatography. There are seven steps in the flash column chromatography they are pump system, mobile phase, mobile phase modifier, stationary phase, column for flash chromatography, cartridges for flash chromatography, and finally, detection techniques. The first step in the flash column chromatography is pump system. The pump system consists of 
two things the first one is pump controller and the second one is vacuum pump the pump controller regulates the pressure and the pressure range required for optimal separation and the vacuum pump helps to accelerate the flow of the mobile phase from the reservoir the second step of the flash column chromatography is mobile phase in chromatography the mobile phase is an important part that helps to separate mixes based on how polar they are the type of stationary phase and the polarity of the mixer to be split determine which mobile phase to use when normal phase silica gel is used as the fixed stationary phase a less polar mobile phase is best in normal phase chromatography solvents like dichloromethane and methane hexane and ethyl acetate or hexane are used ethers are often used if reverse phase silica gel is used as the fixed stationary phase a mobile phase with more polarity is needed in reverse phase chromatography solvents like water and isopropanol or water and acetonitrile are often used as the mobile phase sometimes a mixture of two liquids one with more polarity than the other is used to make the separation easier example mixture of hexane and ethyl acetate in the ratio of 1 is to 1 or dichloromethane and methanol in the ratio of 95 is to 5 the third step is mobile phase modifier when molecules have acidic or basic group they may interact with the residual surface silanol group on the chromatographic support such interaction results in peak tailing which is not considered good in chromatographic separation in order to reduce the peak tailing a chemical reagent is added in a very low concentration typically 1 percentage or less such a reagent is called a mobile phase modifier mobile phase modifier sharpens the peaks and thus improve the resolutions in separations of basics or acidic compounds examples of some common mobile phase modifiers are triethylene amide acetic acid ammonium hydroxide and trifluoroacetic acid the fourth step is uh, stationary phase in the chromatography it is very important to choose the right stationary phase if you want to separate organic chemicals well silica gel was the first and most popular stationary phase used in the flash column chromatography the flash chromatographic separation have also used other stationary phases such as reverse phase c18 alumina and iron exchange resin the fifth step is columns for flash chromatography the flash chromatography columns are the most important parts of devices that use flash chromatography to clean organic compounds in flash chromatography there are two main types of columns they are manually packed columns and pre packed columns to make manually packed columns a good stationary phase like silica gel or other adsorbents are loaded into glass columns but the packing process is done by hand so the columns may not always be perfectly packed if the packing is not done right it can lower the sharpness and makes the separation less effective when packing by hand you need to be skilled and pay close attention to more, to make sure that packing is even and to avoid air holes or channels in the column because packing by hand has its limit you can buy columns that are already packed in a different sizes the fixed phase comes already packed with this pre packed columns so users do not have to pack the columns by hand there are a few benefits to pre packed columns over the columns that are packed by hands the step 6 is cartridges for flash chromatography flash chromatography cartridges or cylinders that looks like pipes and are used to get the samples onto the columns in automatic flash chromatography system there are two main kinds of flash chromatography cartridges on the market they are 
solid load cartridges that are empty and solid load cartridges that are already packed. The step 7 is detection techniques. In flash chromatography, detection methods are very important because they let chemists identify and keep track of their separated compounds. Uh, since automation has become more common, different detectors have been added to flash chromatography devices to make the process of detecting things very easier. Flash chromatography is often used to, to find things with UV visible detector, refractive index detector, fluorescence detector, and evaporative light scattered detector. Applications of flash column chromatography. In natural products and neuroceutical analysis, flash column chromatography is used for isolation and purification of chromophoric and non-chromophoric compounds in giant not feed rhizome, isolation and purification of flavonoids from ginkgo biloba leaves extract, isolation and purification of ginsinocytes from red fans ginseng extract and isolation and purification of catechins from green tea extract. In carbohydrate usage, conjugated quercetin and rutinose are cleaned up with flash chromatography. Flash chromatography is also used for the isolation of valproic acid from cyclodextrin during the encapsulation. And in isolation of amino sugars and a carbose, flash chromatography is used to clean amino sugars and a carbose, which are important molecules in the field of carbohydrate chemistry. And for purification of flavon glycosides, flash chromatography makes it possible to separate and purify flavonone glycosides, which are natural molecules with different biological functions. And in isolation of amino glycoside antibiotics, uh, flash chromatography is used to, to clean amino glycoside antibiotics, which are important antimicrobial drugs. And finally, purification of fatty acid methyl esters. The flash chromatography helps to clean up the fatty acid methyl esters, which are often used in the lipid studies and research. Advantages of flash column chromatography. The first advantage of the flash column chromatography is cost effective. Uh, compared to the other ways to purify, flash chromatography is usually the most cost effective. It needs less liquid and less time to run, which makes it a good choice for large scale purification. The second advantage of flash column chromatography is scalability. Flash chromatography is scalable, so the biologist and chemist can quickly change the size of the column and how much it can hold to fit different sample sizes. It can be used for both small scale purification in the lab and large scale cleaning in the industries. The third advantage of the flash column chromatography is ease to use. Flash chromatography system are easy, easy to use because they have automatic parts that makes the process of purifying easier. Software interfaces make it easy to control and monitor the system, so a bigger range of people can use it. The fourth advantage of flash column chromatography is flexibility. Flash chromatography lets you choose the stationary phase, the mobile phase, and the conditions for release. Based on what needs to be separated, different types of columns and stationary stages can be used. And finally, wide range of uses. A flash chromatography can be used in many different fields such as isolating natural products, finding new drugs, making chemical compounds and more. It works well to clean up a wide range of substances. Finally, limitations of flash column chromatography. Flash column chromatography usually has a lower resolution than HPLC or other advanced mode of separating substances. Uh, this can make it harder to separate complex mixtures of compounds that are closely linked. The, in second, the flash chromatography is good for regular separations, but it may not work as well as for 
difficult separations that requires high levels of purification or selectivity. And in third, flash chromatography works only best for purifying samples that are between moderate and big in size. Other methods like preparative HPLC may be better for analyzing small sample sizes or small amount of traces. Finally, traditional flash chromatography relies mostly on UV detection which may not work for molecules that don't have chromophores. For substances that do not absorb UV light, you may need to use methods like operate light scattering detection or mass spectrometry to find them. Dear viewers, that's all about the flash column chromatography. Thank you for your support. Thank you.